yeah let's get started with the session uh, so today in the session we are going to discuss something about like getting started with uapath studio and creating and running and debugging the robots so we are building it from the scratch and uh, the uapath robots and running it debugging it and publishing it to the orchestrator and today uh, the speakers are like myself uh, i'm working in panix as a senior rpa developer and have experience in using different rpa tools and uh, mostly used to ua path in building multiple process and bots and we have another speaker denila uh, working in panix as an rpa developer and ua path certified and has vast knowledge in different components using uh, ua path mm. And in the next 30 minutes, what we're going to cover is what is UA path in the world of robotic automation and what are the core components in UA path. And we're going to cover the UA path studio web version, web version of the studio and UA path studio in desktop application and now navigating to the UA path studio components. And uh, we are doing the hands on demonstration where we build the live uh, robots. And once we build that, we're going to publish that into the package, into the orchestrator, and manage the process in the using orchestrator. So now I will hand on to uh, Danila to briefly go through the core components of UA Path and the installation guidelines of the UA Path Studio. Go to you, Danila. Yeah. Thank you, Lokesh, for your brief introduction. So coming to the first slide, uh, so the topic is UiPath in the world of robotic automation. So the very first question that comes to one's mind is what is UiPath for people who are listening this term for the first time. So UiPath is a leading robotic automation tool that enables organization to automate repetitive tasks. So those tasks which are done on daily basis, rule-based tasks, mundane tasks, which do not require much of human intervention. For example, filling a form, downloading a report, or doing any Excel operations such tasks are good candidate for RPA and UiPath helps us automate these processes using UiPath tools. UiPath also supports a wide range of applications so one can automate desktop applications, web applications, Citrix applications and also different kinds of technologies like computer vision, OCR, optical character recognition, machine learning activities. So all this makes it versatile for various automation needs as per the client. The next point. So uh, UiPath provides a set of components. The major components in UiPath are UiPath Studio, the orchestrator, and uh, the robots. And there are other components like UiPath Assistant, etc. And uh, the features of UiPath is that it's a low coding tool platform. It is highly customizable, scalable, reliable, and secure. So this makes it easier for users to design, deploy, and manage the automation workflows efficiently. The main goal of this tool is to enhance efficiency of these automation routes of these routine tasks, for example, filling a form. So when a human fills in the form, there can be errors like typing errors. The speed of the human filling the form has different variations. So by automating these tasks, we can reduce errors and save time. So we increase the efficiency of the task. Coming to the UiPath core components, as I mentioned earlier, the core components are Studio, Orchestrator, and Robots. I will be briefly explaining on each of these components in the further slides. Uh, next slide. So the first component is UiPath Studio. This is the place where the actual coding happens. So the UiPath developer will write code to automate processes in UiPath Studio. The interface of UiPath Studio is very user friendly. It has drag and drop feed interface. So we do not have to write a for loop or if loop. We can directly drag that for loop or if loop activity and uh, create code from it. 
so it makes it accessible for users with varying levels of technical expertise so for someone who has very low coding knowledge or no coding background can quickly and easily learn through this tool and for someone who have medium to high coding background this would be a cakewalk for them then UiPath also provides the studio also provides customizable workflows we also have inbuilt uh, project templates so if your customer requirement is similar to the project templates already provided by UiPath you can simply pick it but if your project requirement is complex so UiPath studio also allows you to create your own workflow from scratch this is supported by both attended and unattended automations which i will be further explaining in the future slides there are built-in features in uipath studio for the first one is workflow design so workflow design is basically uh, how you want your process to be automated whether it should be in a sequential manner or if it involves a lot of decisions so we have a flowchart workflow de design so based on your requirement if uh, it's a simple process one can pick up the sequence workflow if it is a complicated process one can use the flowchart workflow this will be explained in detail by Lokesh uh, in the demonstration part then we have variable and argument management to just give a gist what's the what's a variable and argument variable is basically used within a workflow an argument can be passed between workflows that we can pass information from one workflow to another workflow using an argument so we have a panel of variables and arguments where we can initialize store the variables arguments change the names etc then we have reusable components so uh, in an organization it is very common that uh, different automation processes use the same application like an automation process related with finance may use the same application as the an automation process used by the it team so we can create uh, the basic steps like logging into the application logging out of the application this would be common across all the processes so one developer can just write a code to log in or log out and the other developers can use this login and log out code in their processes as a library so this is a very beneficial factor for our developers then we have the error handling just as any other uh, auto, uh, coding platform like have try catch blocks retry so does uipath also provide features like try catch retry rethrow etc then we have the version control so once a process uh, the developer has written code for a process we then publish this process this process is published as a package to the orchestrator so if a client has certain requirement we will code as it is and publish it to the orchestrator with a, a package version after a few months if the client require uh, client requirement changes there are certain modifications then we can uh, modify the existing code and create a new version in the orchestrator again if the client says that they are not satisfied with the new version they prefer the older version we can directly roll back to the older version there is uh, no need to create a new code from scratch or delete the newly added activities so this is the version control of uipath studio this is a very high level gist of uipath studio coming to the next component that is uipath orchestrator so once the developer has written code and uh, wants it to be uh, run by a robot we need the uipath orchestrator assigns this uh, a process to a robot so it is basically a web interface that enables the robot to execute that particular process so orchestrator is a central hub for managing and controlling all your automation bots and processes orchestrator also has a scheduling feature so if your uh, your process needs to run weekly daily monthly or yearly the orchestrator provides us this feature to uh, schedule the pod as per the client requirements.
It also has a dashboard that allows us real-time monitoring of robot activities. So we, we can see that which robot is running what process, which robot is actually busy right now, and which is available. All this can be monitored from the orchestrator dashboard. The next feature is user access control. So orchestrator has this feature of user access control. So in a team, in an organization, many different uh, roles or uh, people with different roles would be accessing the orchestrator. And all of them do not require access to all the features. For example, a business analyst would not require uh, access required by a RPA developer and vice versa. So each one can be given roles or uh, each one can be given permissions as per their roles. This also enables the security of the platform. The next is logging and reporting. So orchestrator keeps detailed logs of all the robot activities, like when a robot started, which process, when the process got completed, when it faulted, was it stopped by someone and also through the orchestrator logs we can track the process uh, performance like till which part of the code the process has reached how much time it has completed etc all this can be uh, can be uh, used by the logging and reporting feature and this helps us to optimize our op automation processes also so coming to the next component that is uh, UiPath Studio. Oh, sorry, UiPath Robots. So once we have published a package to orchestrator, the orchestrator assigns a robot to run that particular process. So there are two different types of robots. One is unattended and the other is attended. Unattended robots do not require any human intervention or supervision. We just assign the robot to do a particular task and it will independently do its task. Whereas attended robots require human intervention or supervision. For example, uh, let's take the example of an HR uh, role where the uh, robot has extracted data of the candidate and that data has to be reviewed by the HR and then continue the further automation. So in that case, the HR needs to intervene, stop the interview, uh, the automation needs to be stopped and then the HR will review it. So the such kind of tasks are uh, require attended robots. So unattended robots are available 24 into 7. They can operate continuously around the clock because there is no human intervention. Whereas attended robots work under supervision, that is human intervention by a UiPath assistance. So they would be available only when the human is available to run the bot. Uh, then we have unattended robots that can run without human intervention, which I explained earlier as well and attended robots work with users app and enterprise system to take on routine tasks so it would work on that particular platform where the actual user is using the application then we have uh, unattended robots handles heavy tasks seamlessly uh, long running workflows so because why is it seamlessly because there is no human intervention no interruption so it could continuously run the workflow for hours together but attended robots too can do uh, handle heavy tasks, but they require human intervention or supervision. Then unattended robots uh, are hosted in VMs and are managed from automation cloud orchestrator, whereas we would require attended robots to be installed on the desktop in which the user is performing action. So yeah, this was the overall high level overview of the three major components of UiPath. Uh, since this session is focusing on the studio, so I will be talking on how to uh, download the studio and set up the studio. So in order to download the studio, one has to access the cloud.uipath.com URL. Once you are on the uh, on the URL, on the right hand side, in the upper right corner, we can see one image. So you can just enter your credentials. If you do not belong to an organization, you can enter your personal uh, email ID. 
once you uh, once you register with your personal email id you'll get a verification mail you just need to verify your email address and then re-sign in on the same url so once you sign in you have access to the automation cloud for community uh, next slide so this is how the portal looks on the upper left corner we also have uh, an option of studio web so uh, you can either use the automation cloud studio web option or you can actually download the studio from autom the automation cloud i will cover the studio web on this slide so it is pretty much similar to the uh, UiPath Studio, where one can create, edit, and publish automation projects without the need of the desktop application. Also, the interface is similar. It has a drag and drop interface, and one can perform debugging and testing, and similarly uh, publish the uh, pro packages to the orchestrator. But there is one dependency uh, that is, since it's a studio web, it would be dependent on internet connection. So here we can uh, do real-time collaboration and project sharing, as well as the maintenance and installation is very much simpler, simpler than the UiPath Studio. But one of the limitation is, as I mentioned, it is dependent on internet connection. So it uh, depends on how your internet connection is. If there's a discrepancy, then it might affect your uh, automation projects as well. So yeah, next slide. This is how to set up UiPath Studio. So on the automation cloud platform, we have on the right hand side, download studio option. We can you can just click on that option from the automation cloud. Once your exe file is in, uh, installed on your local desktop, you have three options to choose amongst the licenses you want according to your need. Once you choose the license, then you have the uh, access to UiPath Studio, as you can see in the last image. So you have two uh, uh, an option to choose between UiPath Studio and UiPath Studio X. So UiPath Studio X is for business users who do not have much knowledge about uh, coding. But for anyone who wants to explore more in UiPath uh, Studio or has technical background, can use the UiPath Studio option and start your automation from there. Yep, so this this was pretty much about how to install UiPath Studio and how to utilize UiPath Studio web. Now I hand over to Lokesh. He will further demonstrate how to create a process and uh, also make you acquainted with the UiPath Studio. Over to you, Lokesh. Uh, thanks, Anila. That was a very brief, brief explanation about the UiPath core components and how to set up the studio. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, give some brief description and uh, demonstration on how to build a, uh, a real bots in UiPath Studio and uh, getting used to that. Uh, so initially, we will do we'll set up the UiPath Studio, then using the modern activities. So we going to interact with the web application and we're going to automate that web application called ACME. And once we uh, we're going to automate the login page, then we're going to go into the uh, web application and uh, screen scrape the data from the web application and paste it in the Excel file. So that's the process. And uh, and once we build the process, we're going to debug that and uh, run the process. If there is any issues, we're going to fix that and we're going to rerun it again. Once everything is okay, we're gonna publish it to the orchestrator and run it from the run the bot from the bot orchestrator. So on the right panel, right hand side, if you can see the image, it is this is how the UiPath Studio looks like. So this is the main workspace of the UiPath Studio, and in the right left hand side of the image, you can see uh, the projects panel, uh, projects, activities, and snippets. Uh, the projects is where you find the dependencies and uh, dependencies of this pro of to build the automation and uh, the project files of the automation and we have the activities tab where you find the activities and on the top you can see the ribbon uh, top ribbon has home design and debug or oh, design is where you have uh, flowcharts and sequence you can build those uh, workflows and then you can debug them 
and if you want to download any packages you can use manage packages here and once you're done with the building the um, automation you have the publish button here where you can publish uh, publish the package to orchestrator on the right hand side you can have the properties panel uh, so once you start building the automation and if you drag and drop any activity so this property panels refer to the uh, functionality of the app activities so if you want to change any functionality of those uh, certain activities you can use this properties panel and we have outlines is like uh, so we have use we are using multiple activities in a flow so let's say if you are lost in which where in which activity you are in then you can outline you can see in the outline that uh, okay uh, this is this will give the hierarchy of the you know whole flow and you can identify which how, how you are building the process and in the down, you can see the orchestrator is not connected. Like this is this will say shows the orchestrator status. So in previous slides, uh, Daniela mentioned that uh, uh, there is some login options uh, to uh, between UiPath Studio and Orchestrator. Once you log into the Orchestra Studio, uh, you will see a green light here showing that the uh, connection is established between UiPath Studio and Orchestrator. And the down left side, uh, you can see here the output error list and uh, breakpoints and other logging reports. So once you build the process and uh, if you want, if you run the process, you'll see the output of the um, process. And then the, if there are any errors, you'll see the error list here. So now let's start with the UiPath uh, Studio. Uh, let's get into the demonstration now. Let me close this one. Uh, and before that, uh, let me give you guys how to uh, set up the um, how to get into the cloud, uh, set up the cloud orchestrator and everything. So for that, as Daniela mentioned, you need to uh, use this cloud.uipath.com uh, URL and log into uh, and go into this URL. And you'll see here if you have an account, you can simply sign in with this account. Otherwise, you need to do if you don't have any account, you just click on sign up. And it will take you to the um, uh, sign up page where uh, if you have, if you're part of any organization and if you have any work email, then you can use this uh, 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 work email to create an account. If you don't have any work email or if you're not part of any organization here, you have get automation cloud for community. You simply click on this one and go to this uh, community platform. And here you can give you a personal email and create your account. Once you create your account, uh, it will send an, a, a verification email to your uh, personal email where you have to activate the, your email. Then uh, you can simply, uh, once you activated it, you can come back here and uh, log into the orchestrator. Uh, once you log into the orchestrator, it will be, it will look something like this. Uh, everything is set up and it will look something like this. And uh, here you have the download option of the studio. You simply need to click on download studio. Then it will uh, download the exe file. And uh, as mentioned before the Danila, uh, you have to uh, go through all the installation steps. Then um, you'll get the studio like this. And now you can access the studio. And this is the main studio or desktop version. And here on the left hand side, you can see the open and the right hand side, you can see the new project. Uh, open is something where uh, if you have already built an existing project and uh, if you want to use someone already built the project and you want to make some changes in that existing project, you simply use in click on open a local project and it will uh, point out to the list of projects you have built so far and you can uh, select whatever you want to select. Uh, and we have different tools uh, like your path extensions uh, in the part of your installation you they'll uh, the application will ask us to uh, install these extensions to the web browser uh, if you miss this step in while installing you can also use this installation steps here where you can install the extensions in your uh, chrome edge and firefox so if you want to interact with the browser applications uh, you need to install uh, these extensions so you can see here that we have a uipath browser extension in the uh, chrome so and then we have the plugins like uh, source control plugins git svc svn tfs 
and then we have the pre-built templates where you, if you want to build it from the scratch you can you create a new process or if you want to use these existing templates you can use these existing templates to build the process and uh, we have this uh, licensing and profile as uh, daniela mentioned before we have studio and uipath studio x uipath studio is for the um, users which has prior uh, program, uh, programming experience um, maybe you don't need to have you know complete programming experience at least you need to have uh, some programming background so that you can you can explore more uh, you know uh, activities and stuff but for your path studio x you should be uh, there you don't, don't need to have any experience or coding experience or if you if you have a limited coding experience then it works for you and uh, so it's pretty easy and you can use the drag and drop tools to uh, build the automation then let's uh, get started. So now uh, this is the new project. So UiPath path is very descript uh, descriptive. So whatever activities you are using, whatever uh, um, um, panels you are using, like it, it gives you a brief description about what it is doing. So you can see here process, you can start with a blank project or design a new automation process. So it is giving brief description about this what it is doing and simply click on process and click on and create a and give a name for this process and just giving it um, first automation underscore acme so i am building a application a process using acme application so this is my first automation so I'm just giving it the name and description as well the first automation and then we have the uh, option uh, location like so once you uh, start this process it is taking the inbuilt uh, location a uh, default location as c drive and it is under the documents ua path so if you want to change the location of uh, to save this process then you can change you can choose which uh, path you want to choose and we can save that the proce uh, process in that uh, location and uh, the ua path studio is compatible with the windows and cross and uh, cross platforms as well such as linux and uh, uh, mac and we have the language we default language we are using vp.net and c sharp uh, so let's create the process and once we create, can create it will create a depends so it's creating the file in the location and it is loading all the project dependencies for me um, and create the workspace for me to build an automation so it's uh, still so it's adding all the dependencies now and creating workspace you can see here Just give a couple of seconds to load the uh, automation. So in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, yeah cool yeah it loaded all the dependencies and it created a workspace for me now if you can see here uh as i mentioned in previous slide uh we have the different panels here like in the left hand side you have the projects we have the dependencies and project files and activities uh, snippets uh, and here on the right on the top ribbon uh, you can see home design and debug the home is where you we created the project and uh, in the design phase we have this uh, uh, if you want to create a sequence or flow chart you can create multiple workflows in this workflow uh, and uh, you have the deep options if you want to download a package you can download using the manage packages and uh, these are all the dependent components of screen scraping and web scraping components and you have this here uh, uh, tab once you start done, done building the package uh, building the automation you can publish it using the publish button so and here the properties uh, panel 
and as i mentioned before you can see here the uh, a green light where the studio is connected with orchestrator and you can see a small green light and you can see the url which is the cloud url for me uh, orchestrator url and the connection is established and here in the down you can see the outputs um, output panel where once you run done building the process you can uh, uh, see the output results of the process run um, and uh, let me show you so once you let's say a, you this is my first automation acme right so if you want to see the location where it got saved you can simply go into click right click on this one and go to open project folder it will take you through the project folder um, see here you have all the dependencies downloaded and the project files uh, it is under as i mentioned it is on the c path uh, c drive uh, documents UA path and um, <clears throat> and in this location uh, so let me close that and let me start giving you some examples on what is sequence and what is flowchart uh, let me build a small sequence for you what is sequence uh, let's create a sequence uh, sequence is uh, nothing but uh, mm, uh, it represents a block of uh, activities in UA Path Studio. So let me drag and drop a activity here. Uh, let let me take a message box. So if you can see here uh, the message box, and if I can hover on this one, so it is giving me the description of uh, what is what is this message box doing. It's type message box name displays a message box with a specific text and button included in UA Path Studio dot activity system dot activities. What is this UA Path system dot activities? As I mentioned before, these are the dependencies uh, which you need to install uh, if you want to use specific activities. So, if you uninstall this UA Path dot system activities uh, dependency, then you can't able to see this uh, UA Path, uh, message box. Uh, uh, activity in the activities panel. So uh, let's say if you want to use UA Path Excel activities, let's say here uh, we have some Excel activities, right? Uh, if you want to use those Excel activities, you need to install the uh, UA Path role Excel activities dependency. And if you want to use mail activities like email activities, you can simply type in email in the activities panel. You can see there are multiple activities related to the email so you simply need to download those dependence install this dependency in the uh, project panel so how we gonna uh, install these dependencies simply go into the manage packages and these are the project dependent de default dependency uh, UA path uh, created for us as part of workspace uh, and if you want to install uh, uh, the packages which are not there in the dependency then you simply go into the all packages go and simply type your path dot uh, uh, activities uh, system dot activities uh, see here you can see here system dot activities you can simply click on install and update and click on save then you will see the dependencies here then uh, you can use the activities related to those dependencies and yeah that's how we have to you know find the activities related to the you know work you are doing if you can't find the activities uh, related to you know uh, your uh, desired work then you have to uh, install those packages and uh, coming to the sequence uh, sequence is an a, as i mentioned before sequence represents block of uh, activities in ua path um, so and it is in a uh, unidirection so whatever code you uh, whatever the you know activities you placed in this sequence those sequence are only being executed uh, let me write a small uh, message box and you can see here the functionalities of this message box is uh, in the properties panel so automatically close after a few seconds text and you know uh, these are the functionalities of the message box um, and let me add one more uh, message box here. Uh, and give it as uh, this is location. Uh, and let's run this one and see. Uh, and the sequence, uh, whatever the activities in sequence are going from top to bottom. So let's see how it looks like when we run it. Hmm. 
So it is uh, compiling the activities and creating uh, a run for us. So if you can debug this, see here uh, in the output panel, it started, the project started and is Oops. Okay. So it finished the process. So uh, let me rerun this one again. Just give me one second. So yeah, as part of debug, it is taking the main flow as an activity. So now we have to compile the activities um, using the separate sequence flow. Uh, let's give it a try. Now, if you can see here, it is loading the dependencies and uh, it uh, should display a message box with hi. Uh, got hit here. And then it should may display one more message. Uh, this is Lokesh. Yes. Then automation is done. So the execution finished. So as you can understand now, that's how the sequence works. So it's in the, you know, in a unidirection and uh, uh, it is used to build the linear flows. And let's uh, uh, build something called flowchart. Uh, let's see how flowchart works. Hmm. So flowchart is uh, multidirectional, so bidirectional. So let me give one, Input dialog box and let's build a small flow with the flow chart as well. Uh, let's double click that and uh, enter my name. And so I'm going to give it as create a variable for here. Uh, And once I create a variable, I want to drag and drop a decision box. So if the name is correct, then it should go to the true path. And if the decision, uh, name is false, then it should go to the false path. So let me search for the flow decision. Yes. Uh, and uh, here I'll give a condition that a string name is equal to location. Location, then you should go to the happy path, uh, which is true path here this way. Um, and it should display a message box uh, stating high location. And if it is false, then it should uh, go into the false path and display a message. Enter correct name. Okay, then we can connect it to the input dialog box. So we can, you know, until we get the correct name, it will loop through. So let me run the bot and show you how it works. So it should ask me a dialog box. Let me give some of them, uh, maybe Danila. Uh, and it is not asking, it is asking me to enter the correct name again. So it will loop through again and it will ask me to enter the correct name, Lokesh. And if I click on OK, then it will give me the high Lokesh message. So then it will finish the process. Uh, so I think now you understand how these sequence and flow charts work. Like so using the sequence, it is by direct unidirection, but uh, uh, it is uh, it is multi-direction and you can, you know, uh, connect with the different paths and you can go back to connect to the, you know, uh, previous activities and you can use flow decisions. So you, you, we can use flow chart to build the complex uh, automations. Um, that's pretty much about the sequence and flowchart. And now let's uh, start building a, a automation using web browser. And um, let me open the browser here. 
let me close this one and uh, so uh, we are using the ACME application to uh, log in and excrete the data. So to to start a, uh, to open a browser, you'll simply just double click on the Chrome or Edge. And once you double click on that, you, as a human, you will double click on the uh, browser and it will open a browser activity. And then it, you just need to type uh, uh, URL then it will point take you to the uh, web application. Then once you are into the web application, manually what you'll do, you'll simply type the email. Uh, and you'll type the password. And click on login. So, oops. oh my bad, sorry. What's wrong with this one? Let me close this one and open. Okay. So yeah, as many are going to um, dot you and uh, and clicking on login. So it will take you through the ACME application. Uh, so here you can see it is taking you through our ACME application. So as simple as that, like even we are using the same method to uh, same method to uh, automate the process. So. So let's come into the main flow and uh, here I am into the activities. So initially what I need to do, uh, I need to open the application, open the browser, right? So simply what I need to do, similarly what I need to do is in the activities tab in the search button, you just need to type open. So once you click on open application, you'll see something here similarly like this, use application slash browser. So this use application, as I mentioned before, it is your path is pretty descriptive. So you can see here, open a desktop application or web browser page to use it in your automation. Simply drag and drop this here and point it to the application. So once you point it to the application, uh, see here, it is automatically uh, getting the uh, URL page. So now we are using the login page, right? So uh, we might use other up uh you know urls so i'm just using the uh, basic uh, url so and if you can see here uh on the properties panel uh, so in the options do you want to close this browser no never and if you want to open yes uh, if it is not open and resize the window it is resizing the window like if the browser is in minimized state uh or like you know in the small state in the minimized state then it will maximize the application so let's make it as maximize then once we open the application what's our next steps are so we are entering the email i mean typing the email typing means we are typing using the keyboards so we are using type typing uh, you email and typing password and then we are clicking on the login, clicking using the mouse, we are clicking the login. So same thing we have to uh, search in the activities panel, as simple as that. Uh, so we'll just click type into. So when you click on type and type into, you see here, you got this type into activity. So you simply drag and drop this one here. Mm, and once you dragged in, uh, just point out to the application. Uh, see here, this field, email field, and wait it to load. So the automation identified, the automation identified the um, information and searching for the as uh, elector. And you can click on confirm. So once you click on confirm, uh, you can type in 
uh, your email p at the rate pernix.com.au and you can add one more type into so we need to type in the password now So it is collecting the target information. Yeah, and click on confirm. So, and you need to type in the password. So by default, it's taking it as a password as a, um, you know, string, uh, secure string and see it is descripting the uh, uh, password and uh, encrypting the password, sorry. Uh, then just click on now next once you enter the email and password we gonna do click login so simply drag and drop the click activity here and uh, click on login so it is identifying the element and collecting the information target information and click on confirm it looks like the uh, yes now we automated the login page now let's uh, simply run and see how it behaves uh, let me debug this and click on and file so I'm, i close the application uh, so the, the bot automatically launches the web application uh, see here uh, there is a green signal symbol here, which is showing that the automation is running. Uh, the bot opened the application. Just wait it, wait for it to load and it opened the application and it typed in the email, typed in the password, click the login and done. So, see how easy it is and so the next task is uh, we have we are into the application now we just need to click into work items uh, and download uh, go into the work items and we are using the click activity again so we are simply clicking on the work items Inform. Uh, once you are into the work items, so what you are doing is uh, you are scraping the data from all these uh, 12 different pages and pasting it into the Excel. Uh, so what's so which activity we need to use uh, to scrape the data? So we simply need to we have it. Uh, uh, activity called table extraction so simply you just need to click on that and uh, over to specific row or column and you can simply click on that specific element and it will display would you like to extract all the columns from the table just select yes then see the magic it is uh, getting all the uh, you know seven rows and ten columns uh, ten, ten rows and seven columns from the application from the page so you can see all the rows and uh, with the action url and uh, you know description and everything and what i need to do now here is i need to uh, extract data from uh, all the pages so for that what i need to do is i just need to extract data from multiple pages it will ask us to indicate a specific uh, you know um, and next button so i'm just pointing it here and clicking on 
collect target information then so now it's done so now it will extract the data from all the 10 pages now click on ok so now uh, it created the extract data table uh, the whole data extracted is stored in the extract data table uh, variable and now we are using right range activity which is excel based activity uh, you can see here if you hover on this writes the data from data table in spreadsheet uh, starting from starting cell uh, so this is ua path excel dot activities so you simply drag and drop this one here and uh, we are pointing it to the uh, spreadsheet which you want to uh, Want to paste the whole data in so let's it load and i have the i have created spreadsheet for the data to enter so this is the data.xlsx and uh, i want to name a sheet here uh, is sheet one click on save see here if there is an issue uh, then it will give it a, a red mark and just give me one second. Click on save. And what is the data you need to write into the Excel? Uh, I want to write the data table, uh, which extracted from the extract data table. So simply point out the data table. Sorry. Extract data table and click on save. Uh, so once you clicked on save, uh, then simply log out and uh, and close this one let me run the bot Uh, so it is opening the ICM application. Enter the email, the password, click on login. Click on work items. And here it is uh, uh, looping through all the web pages. It extracted from third page. Now it is moving to the fourth one. Now it is moving to the fifth one. Next to the sixth. To the seventh. To the eighth. to the ninth and to the tenth and to the eleventh and to the twelfth so it extract all the data from all 12 pages and now it should write in the excel so let's wait because it extracted nearly 100 uh, line items right it will take fire 30 to 40 seconds to write into the Excel. Uh, so there is some issue here. Uh, it is again going back. Let's debug what is uh, happening here. Uh, the issue here is the target was found using fallback method con using computer vision. So let's stop the bot. Uh, so and fix that issue. What's happening there? So it is a, a the issue is in the there is a warning. It is showing and it is in the extract data table. So let's go there and fix the issue. Uh, so here it is taking the computer vision. So which is causing the trouble. So let's enable this one, disable this one and save this and now run it again.
So it is opening the application again. And in the email, password, login. Uh, entering the work items, extracting data from all the tabs. It's going to the second one. It's going to the third one now. It's going to the fourth one. It's going to fifth one. It's going to the sixth one now. Seventh one. Eighth one. Nine. Ten. 11 and 12 so yeah so it finished the processing and it is writing it in the excel now so let's give 30 to 40 seconds to write it in the excel Yep, the process is finished now. You can see here it took like one minute, 30 seconds to, you know, write, uh, you know, log in and write. So the cast modified date is 3, 1 p.m. So now let's open the Excel sheet and see what it wrote down in the Excel. Processing, just give me one second. Opening data, yes. See here, it extracted all, all the data, a web screen. So, and it took like one minute and 30 seconds to you know, log in and describe the data and write it in the Excel. So, that's pretty simple and easy process. And and once you're done, you building the process, you can simply publish it uh, using the publish and once you publish this uh, you can publish it to the orchestrator so it will end the project and it will give a package it will ready a package for us so and you can simply publish that to the orchestrator see here you can simply click on publish so it is compiling the activities and it will all the dependencies and it will gather all the dependencies and it will publish to the orchestrator see here you can see all the main xml and flowchart and sequence all the flows which we have created so far everything is moved to the cloud see here it is published now if you can go into the automation cloud and if in the orchestrator You can see here. You can see here the packages. In the packages, you can see the My Automation ACME. And with this, you can invoke into the works and you can run the cloud flows from here. Uh, so can you can simply like my first automation and next sorry uh, next and click on create and close and you can run this automation you from the so here in the cloud and you can point it to the different machines so here i am using my machine so here you can point it to the different machines and you can run it in the cloud orchestrate cloud vms and you can uh, run it in different machines as part of your unattended and attended modes yes that's pretty much i think uh, hope everyone got some clear understanding of how the uipath studio works and how to build an automation and how to use the activities workflows and flowcharts uh, yeah, that's pretty much. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.
I hope everyone is clear, right? Like if, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. So, uh, Surya here. Uh, hi, Lokesh. Hi, Surya. So, uh, you have added packages, right? If there is any uh, update in the uh, package, if UiPath has done uh, update or upgrade to those packages, what happens in that case? Uh, so, if there is any upgrade or something like that, let's say here. Uh, so, you have these versions, right? So, you can upgrade to the latest package and you can install that. So there are so many versions, like from the beginning, they have uh, keep on updating this, uh, you know, uh, dependency packages, right? So if they update a new package and they release a new version of the package, then you can simply update here and, you know, roll back to the, you know, latest update and you can uninstall that. And do we need to manually do that? Yeah, we need to manually do that. Okay. Yes. Is there any other questions? Yeah, uh, thanks guys. Thanks for joining for today's session. I think this record this session is recorded and you can find this uh, session in the uh, community forum. Uh, yeah, you can access that if you want to go back and see what how the flows looks like and how we build the flows. You can simply, uh, you know, play this video and start building your automation. Yeah, just let me know. Yeah, I think uh, Rohit just pasted my mine and Danila's uh, LinkedIn profiles. Like, if you want to have any doubts or questions, just feel free to reach to me and Danila. You can sort it out. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining Thanks. for today's session.